<laughs> so let me start with uh, so uh, I did look over the questions because I was wondering if uh, uh, a lot of these questions had diagrams, but I guess not. So um, I do think I ask um, some uh, challenging conceptual questions here. So let's see how well perplexity does. Uh, you can see that it's potentially challenging because none of these questions are from the textbook. Uh, I did look at the OpenStax conceptual questions and I didn't like any of them. So I had to write them myself. <laughs> we'll see. So the first question. Uh, I, I do love circuits. And um, when we... Uh, switch over from physics 4 series to physics 3 series, uh, The one of the things I will really miss teaching will be circuits. Because with the uh, physics for biological science majors, um, you know, it shouldn't really uh, emphasize circuits all that much. Um, but I, I do love circuits. Uh, it's a shame that we don't get to spend a lot of time. So um, I think I typed everything. Okay, so let's ask. Explain qualitatively effect the presence of capacitors on voltage and current. Um, so on voltage, it, capacitor tends to keep the voltage constant because the amount of charge on the capacitor directly related to voltage takes time to change. Um, current, they can be more nuanced. Uh, I forget what I put in the model answer. <laughs> uh, into circuit. In, in, sure. Um, you saw some uh, counter examples of this in the lab uh, on Tuesday. Um, <laughs> it behaves like a short circuit when it's not charged. So, maximum current flow. This is a little bit too simplistic of a, a special case of description. Uh, for me, anyway. Pro uh, Okay, yeah, it's a formula driven answer. Yeah, I don't think it's really answering well. Um, because it's uh, giving you basically what you would see in high school physics, not um, what someone should see in an engineering physics. Yeah, for I don't like the tying of the voltage and current. I mean, they are related to each other. Like a current is the time derivative of the Q, so it's related to time derivative of voltage. But, you know, the function and its time derivative are not um, always same. Like a function itself, let's see, a function itself can be a large value and the derivative can be small. So, um, yeah, so this is what I would say a B minus answer. As in, and you know, it's saying a lot of things which are not incorrect, uh, but it's uh, it's not getting at the really the key thing, which is that the presence of capacitor tends to keep the voltage across the capacitor constant. When so, if you you can't change the voltage across capacitor suddenly without incurring an infinite amount of current. So uh, in a circ most circuit where amount of current is finite, it's limited, rate at which voltage changes will have to uh, be limited. So, yeah. So, P minus answer. Uh, in the sense that, you know, if a student uh, gave me this answer in a, like, an impromptu thing, I'd say, all right, that's a decent. But for a larger language model, which, you know, should be perfect or, you know, bust, <laughs> it's not good enough. <laughs> um, and uh, I think that's a, so one thing I did find um, ChatGPT to be limited in. It's, uh, you know, it doesn't answer at a level of an expert. So when it gets a difficult question, um, it, it's a hit or miss. Uh, it, it's not, you know, it's trained on some body of text uh, of which, I guess, uh, the kind of the res uh, resources that kind of references that experts would look at is a limited portion of it. So, okay, inductors. So presence. Of, so it's the uh, version of the question one for inductors, and the main role of inductor is that it limits the amount of change of current. It comes from here that whenever you if you want the current to change suddenly, then that has to involve infinite voltage. So let's see if we got that. I think that's easier to get. Let's see. When you properly putting changes in current, okay, that's getting there. Uh, yeah, induction, properly, yeah, sure. Um, I already gave you that. Um, 
generate the voltage. Yeah, the opposite change. Okay, so the register. Yeah, it already said that it's second paragraph. Just repeat the first one. Um, yeah, and um, you can also find the counter examples to this. This is the case where um, if the current current to thread inductor is already zero, if it was some other value, then it doesn't behave like an open circuit. Yeah, transition is not instantaneous, but over characters time constant. Yeah, I think I might say it's a, um, it's also it's also a B minus answer, in the sense that you know it's saying all these paragraphs and none of the, them are incorrect per se, but it also doesn't highlight the key one important thing, which uh, someone who has a lot of experience with the linear circuits would. So, another B minus answer. <laughs> Let's look at question three. Uh, uh, you know, it'll probably work that out well. I don't think it, this is actually a difficult question. Um, I mean, it, you know, it can be difficult if you're not used to working with units in uh, circuits. But um, I think uh, I, I don't know. I think a, a large language model would have um, a lot of experience with working out units. So we'll see. Or cut the unit of the L over off. Okay. I think it'll do well. Yeah, time constant. Yeah. Time constant is the product. Of time for the for each product. Yeah, yeah. But when it's charging, when it's discharging, it's a, uh, you know, um, um, the. Reciprocal of that? I, well, <laughs> something along that line. <laughs> Not reciprocal of that, maybe the 100% minus that. Oh. So it's a, yeah. a five time constant. Yeah, okay. Um, now, is it going to answer B? No. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Is the right, yeah, that's the right answer. Okay, you need of so ohm. Yeah, Faraday is a coulomb per volt from definition of capacitance. And by the way, that's how I recommend that you handle units in circuits and electricity and magnetism. Because uh, there's going to be so many different ways you can combine units. Trying to memorize relationship between units is going to be... Uh, I, I myself would have memorized those. But what I can uh, trust myself to memorize is the key equations, like definition of capacitance. And that will also tell you how the units are related in that equation. Uh, so Ohm, you know, this comes from Ohm's law. Uh, so Ohm farad is um, so volt per ampere times Coulomb per volt. Volts cancel, and you get Coulomb per ampere, uh, which is a second because ampere is Coulomb per second. Yeah, good. Um, Henry, okay. Henry is defined as. Volt second per ampere. Yeah, I guess the way they write it, it's not as obvious where it comes from. Uh, it comes from the definition of inductance. So in circuit context, we define inductance as um, this. Well, as this uh, volt divided by rate of change of current. So you know ampere per second in the denominator. So second goes on the numerator. So that's why volt second per ampere. Um, so. So you know, I don't have in my head memorized Henry is equal to volt second per ampere. What I do have memorized is inductance is voltage difference divided by rate of change of current. So, okay, ohm is yeah same as the so volt second per ampere yeah yeah that will give you a second yeah that's a good answer um nothing wrong with it. <laughs> Let's look at the final question and then uh, move on to the rest of the session today. Uh, is this typical? You may have spherical cows in a vacuum joke. Uh, let me get rid of things to a small size. No exception for times we assume they are working in practice. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, okay. Um, so, in my personal opinion, it is easier to get an ideal capacitor than ideal inductor. Um, let's see how GPT answers. Um, and uh, I haven't tested my personal opinion through in like poll of colleagues or anything. So it might be just me who thinks it's easier to get an ideal capacitor. Um, so capacitors, um, equivalent, yeah, series resistance. So 
uh, there could be uh, energy dissipation when there's current flowing through a capacitor. Um, um, yeah. So any linear circuit element, like uh, a general way to model it is to treat it as, uh, you know, register inductance capacitance. I don't know if they're always series or they, if they can be treated as parallel, but, you know, that's the general impedance that you'll get. So, yeah. yeah. And leakage current. And I would actually add one other thing, which is uh, it, they, it could be destroyed. <laughs> if you apply too much voltage, there's a dielectric breakdown that could just destroy the capacitor. So uh, leakage current is, uh, I guess, less a destructive version of that. Um, inductors, yeah, DC resistance is the big one. I don't think, uh, unless you use a superconductor, you can't really get rid of it. Um, or it's really costly to get rid of it by using thicker copper wires. Uh, yeah, this is also interwinding. Oh yeah, because uh, as you wind, it's a conductor near a conductor that'll give you a capacitance. Yeah, so some stray capacitance. Uh, easier to obtain. Yeah, ideal capacitor. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, I don't know. There's a something called the Zellman amnesia effect. <laughs> you know, where People, when they read newspaper articles, when it's in their own field of expertise, they spot all these mistakes. And then um, when they read about uh, some other thing that they are not experts in, then they just believe whatever's in the newspaper. Um, I, I don't know. How, well, it's not really related to that. I don't know if I should feel happy that uh, GPT agrees with my personal opinion because, you know, I just gave it B minus for first two questions out there. But. Well, we agree that it's easier to get ideal capacitor than ideal inductor. Um, now, this has nothing to do with uh, idealness or not. Uh, this is, will be related to AC circuits. That's the impedance phase angle that you will see next week. Um, meaning that they will... Oh, I see. I see. So, uh, what it's saying is, so this is just, uh, so in the context of what you will cover next week, which, you know, if you give answer like this, I would get suspicious of you. Like this week, you should not be referring to impedance or impedance phase angle. Or if you are bringing that from your, I don't know, electrical engineering class, you ought to be ready to give a lot more context to that than just uh, mentioning impedance phase angle. Um, so, so 90 degree, the, I guess, I always mix up leading and lagging. Let's say let's just say that's leading. Uh, that leading phase angle. Um, so ideal capacitor would have exactly ninety degrees, and it's gonna be a little bit off from that uh, off from that ninety degree because of um, because of some uh, parasit the series uh, uh, resistance that will have some real part of the impedance. So. Um, Anyway, so one or the other. I always mix up leading and lagging, so I don't try to get it right. Um, so it's here. It's saying uh, practical capacitors are closer to that ideal ninety degrees than practical inductors are, uh, where the, the red series of resistance causes it to have a real part of impedance and not behave as ideal inductor. Um, yeah. Spot if we, yeah. By the way, when you do active circuits with uh, like op amps, there are um, uh, like an active circuit element that you can build that behaves like an inductor in a circuit, but it has no inductive components. Uh, it's uh, you can pr you'll probably see it either in an electrical engineering lab, even in lower division, or um, many physics programs will have upper division uh, basic semiconductor circuits lab. Uh, so there you might see. Anyways, so um, these are all the circuit questions, and if they sounded a little bit challenging, it's because they are. I wrote them because the questions in the textbook seemed too easy, and um, and it's hard to hit the balance of where questions aren't just boringly easy versus uh, ones where uh, you know people might not all many people might just miss it because it's a challenging question. Anyways, so that's it for this. Um,